अनंतम विभुम निर्विकल्पम निरीहम शिवम संगहीनम यदोंकारगम्यम निराकारम अत्युज्वलम मृत्युहीनम परम ब्रह्म नित्यम तदेवाहमस्मि यसाम्राज्य विभूतिरेशा भवत के पाशी महिमा प्रसादात प्राप्तामया श्री गुरवे महात्मने नमो नमस्ते स्तु पुनर्नमोस्तु नमो नमस्ते स्तु पुनर्नमोस्तु नमो नमस्ते स्तु पुनर्नमोस्तु नमस्तस्म सदस्म कस्म जिन्मसे नम यदि तद्विश्वेण राजते गुरुराजते यदि तद्विश्वेण राजते गुरुराजते हरि a uh, few verses we will chant 18th chapter 6th on one 18th chapter 6th etanya pitu karmani etanya pitu karmani sangam tyaktva phalani cha sangam त्यक्त्वा फलानि च कर्तव्यानि इति मे पार्थ कर्तव्यानि इति मे पार्थ निश्चितं मतमुत्तमं निश्चितं मतमुत्तमं नियतस्य तु सन्यासः नियतस्य तु सन्यासः कर्मणो नोपपद्यते कर्मणो नोपपद्यते मोहात्तस्य परित्यागः मोहात्तस्य परित्यागः तामस परिकीर्तितः तामस परिकीर्तितः दुःखमित्येव यत्कर्म दुःखमित्येव यत्कर्म कायक्लेश भयात्यजेत कायक्लेश भयात्यजेत सकृत्वा राजसम त्यागम सकृत्वा राजसम त्यागम नैव त्याग फलम लभेत नैव त्याग फलम लभेत कार्यमित्येव यत्कर्म कार्यमित्येव यत्कर्म नियतम क्रियते अर्जुन नियतम क्रियते अर्जुन संगम त्यक्त्वा फलम चैव संगम त्यक्त्वा फलम चैव दिस परत इट इज कॉजिंग द आई थिंक कार्यमित्येव यत्कर्म कार्यमित्येव यत्कर्म नियतम क्रियते अर्जुन नियतम क्रियते अर्जुन संगम त्यक्त्वा फलं चैव संगम त्यक्त्वा फलं चैव सत्याग सात्विको मतः सत्याग सात्विको मतः सो आफ्टर दिस वी हैव डन सो दिस 
tyaga is coming repeatedly in this manner because tyaga has is always associated even now also not only those days it is associated with external external tyaga so people used to think sanyasa means leaving everything just going off similarly tyaga means leaving whatever you have actually the last book released on yoga vasishta the nirvana prakarana third volume inner science of inner redemption it is entirely on a single story of shikhit dhaja and chudala shikhit dhaja was a king and chudala was the queen somehow chudala got illuminated at a very young age because of her free open mind simple mind it happens where the mind is not complicated without much trouble they get illumined so that is what happened to chudala and her face was beaming with the brilliance of knowledge so shikhit dwaja asked her both of them are spiritual shikhit dwaja asked her that what is this shine on your face the brilliance on your face so chudala simply narrated what is her state of the mind shikhit dwaja completely ignored and laughed her off saying that oh you are blabbering it is not at all true of you you are saying all these things not only that finally shikhit dwaja perhaps he became a little intolerant about it also that the wife has got illumined and i have not got anything so he finally left the kingship left the throne left the kingdom went over to the forest to practice spiritual sadhana austerity and all and the whole book is step step by step how shikhit dwaja was not able to get over his illusion delusion and re- renouncing one after another whatever he had get putting catching hold of another thing another subtle thing like that the whole it's a thick book entirely but it's a very concise presentation of what is there in yoga vasishta in yoga vasishta it is at least five times this dimension so but chudala was very fond of her husband also she wanted her husband also to be illumined so finally she took the when she understood the whole thing somehow the husband has to be illumined but the husband is not going to listen to her because she does not have he did not have the value for the wife state he was not recognizing that so she took the disguise of a brahmacharin a young brahmacharin and went to at the same time she he was running the kingdom also went to the forest met shikhit dwaja and then started telling him the what is the real sadhana what is the real sadhana one after another at one point shikhit dwaja was supposed to was about to commit suicide by jumping into the fire that you say my body is the bondage i want to renounce this body also and every time he does something chudala explains that this is not the but how much it takes to really understand the simplicity and the the real pursuit that we are holding on to so many things so finally shikhit dwaja was also illumined now because of that this tyaga and sanyasa is so much believe to be the external and what is what we have that it is not easy to get over the delusion you will find in even whatever comes in various places also this karma phala tyaga of bhagavad gita is very very less understood because people have they are not able to get over that the by knowledge it automatically becomes redundant the by knowledge it becomes i am not doing anything at all even surrender becomes redundant that i am already surrendered what am i to surrender so that is why they are in bhagavad gita they are discussing so elaborately that it is rajasika tyaga tyaga it is tamasika tyaga naiva tyaga phalam labhet by doing that kind of a tyaga what is the tyaga phala 
त्याग फल इज प्योरिटी द माइंड द नॉन पॉजिटिवनेस ऑफ द माइंड द माइंड बिकमिंग लाइक स्पेस सो इफ वी आउट ऑफ फियर और आउट ऑफ ट्रबल इफ यू लीव एवरीथिंग दैट मीन्स वी आर अगेन बिकमिंग कॉन्स्ट्रिक्टेड वॉट एवर ट्रबल कम्स अ फ्री मैन शुड बी able to take it up also when it is to be left he will leave also but if i are afraid of some burden or some trouble and leave out of that that means i am shunning myself from certain things i am again becoming constricted in my identity so that has to be understood today i thought i will summarize that um, in a few slides whether it will help you we will see whether it helps or not but before that a few shlokas also can be done 10th <coughs> verse na dveshtya kushalam karma na dveshtya kushalam karma kushale nanu shajjate kushale nanu shajjate tyagi sattva samavishto tyagi sattva samavishto मेधावी छिन्न संशय मेधावी छिन्न संशय आफ्टर सेइंग व्हाट इज सात्विक त्याग व्हाट इज राजसिक त्याग व्हाट इज तामसिक त्याग देन ही इज सेइंग दैट व्हाट इज द आइडियल त्याग हु इज द रियल त्यागी दैट डेफिनेशन हैज टू कम आफ्टर ऑल दिस डिविजन सो दिस श्लोक इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ अ द स्टेट ऑफ अ रियल त्यागी व्हाट इज इट सत्व समाविष्ट सम्यक आविष्ट सविष्ट सत्व सविष्ट मीन्स हु इज फुली इम्ब्यूड विथ हु इज कंप्लीटली इंड्यूस्ड विथ द सत्व गुना दैट मीन्स ही इज इन अ वेरी हाई सात्विक स्टेट सत्व इज दैट ही इज अ गुनातीत बट बिफोर बिकमिंग गुनातीत ही हेज टू बिकम एक्सट्रीमली सात्विक सत्व सविष्ट छिन्न संशय इट इज अ प्रोज फॉर्म आई एम टेलिंग सत्व सविष्ट छिन्न संशय मेधावी त्यागी सो त्यागी हेज बीन गिव थ्री एडजेक्टिव वन इज सत्व सविष्ट सम्यक आविष्ट सत्वगुण सत्वगुण छिन्न संशय चिन्ह संशय मीन्स एब्सोल्युटली डाउटलेस हाउ डज यू एनी वन बिकम डाउटलेस वी सेट दैट द इन मुंडक ओपनिषद द लास्ट श्लोक वॉट आर द थ्री रेजल्ट ऑफ सीईंग द ट्रूथ एव्रीवेर यस तस्मिन दृष्टे परावरे बै सीईंग द ट्रूथ एव्रीवेर इन द स्मॉल बिग इन मेडिटेशन आउट ऑफ मेडिटेशन नेवर मिसिंग द ट्रूथ वॉट आर द थ्री विद्यते हृदय ग्रंथि छिद्यंते सर्व संशया क्षीयंते चास्य कर्माणि दैट मीन्स इमोशनली नो कंस्ट्रक्शन इज दैट ही बिकम्स एब्सोल्युटली फ्री लाइक स्पेस इंटेलेक्चुअली इंटेलिजेंशियली छिन्न संशय ही बिकम्स डाउटलेस एंड क्षीयंते चास्य कर्माणि he does not have any more karma karma because he doesn't feel that i am he may do 10 times the karma of others but he doesn't feel that i am doing this i have done this i have to do this that i part is not there so for him all karmas have completely fallen off so here also he is saying chinna samshaya that means the tyagi has attained that intelligential fulfillment where he does not have any doubt whether i should do this i should do that or anything of that sort <coughs> samshaya means it is avidya krita it is coming out of ignorance when the ignorance goes the doubts also will go but remember the doubts will go from where where are the doubts residing not mind in the intelligence it is the lack of clarity in the intelligence so when a person will be be chinna samshaya when his intelligence is absolutely freed from all its ignorant holdings baggages so i am repeatedly saying because people do not have that idea they considered the sadhana of intelligence to be something intellectual it is far from intellectual it is not intellectual gymnastics of 
explaining things this way, that way, with illustration and all. The wherever the jnana is sitting, there itself the jnana has to dawn, and it is sitting in the intelligence. So the intelligence has to be buddhi, has to be refined, has to be sublimated, has to be elevated, has to be expanded, whatever you may say. The whole thing is in the buddhi, the whole jnana, the knowledge, the vision is the buddhi's vision, ikshana, I have said so many times. So, such a tyagi is sattva samavishtaha chinna samshaya medhavi. Medha we often we use for talented people also. But actually the medha word is used for one whose buddhi is fixed in the Atma. As I am repeatedly saying his buddhi becomes the viveka buddhi. So the word here used is medha vi means who has the Atma jnana whose buddhi is anchored in the soul, in the truth, ultimate truth. Shankaracharya or uh, I think Shankaracharya has used the word Brahma Medha Yukta. Brahma Medha Yukta. That means his buddhi behaves like the Brahman. That means the truth. It is the expression of the truth. That is why we say the whatever comes out of the jnani's mouth, that is the Veda Vakya. Because what are the Vedas? Vedas are the expression of truth. The seers, the rishis, they realize the truth and the expression has come out as Vedas. Like that, a knower in any circumstance in present era also, wherever, he is always living in the truth. So, about whatever things, whatever words comes out of him, it is actually a Veda Vakya. It is considered to be Veda Vakya because he is only expressing the truth. So, such a tyagi, what does it do? Na dveshti, akushalam karma na dveshti, kushale na anushajyate. See, normally this kushala word has come actually from kusha grasa, from silk. Yoga ha karma su kaushalam, that means yoga is the silky path to perform. It, it means that, that means it is so smooth. Silk means very smooth, it doesn't have any. So, kushala karma, kushala, kushala means which is very easily done, which is facile like that. Also, it is used as something which is shubha, that good. But actually, the direct meaning is this. Akushala means which is not pleasant, which cannot be done easily, difficult work. But it also means ashubha. Akushala also means another meaning is ashubha, that means inauspicious. Shubha means auspicious. Ashuva means inauspicious. Uh, looking at your uh, I mean, gaze, I could understand you are not following <laughs> words. You should tell me whenever there is a difficulty. Because Sanskrit words will go on coming. And it's very difficult to resist that. So, Shubha and Ashuva also you will find that Shubha, Shubha Parityagi. In another place it is that Bhaktiman in the 12th chapter most probably. Shubha, Shubha Parityagi. It's a constant confusion in people that how a knower can become transcend Shubha and Ashubha. Will he do Ashubha work? Ashubha means inauspicious things. Will he do? Normally he will not because he doesn't have any selfishness. Normally we do inauspicious things, wrong things because of our selfishness, because of our greed, because of our ego. Now if the person doesn't have this, normally he will not do. But why are they saying that Shubha Shubha? But both he goes beyond Shubha and Ashubha. Sometimes some step he has to take, which apparently from the moral judgment it appears to be inauspicious and wrong step. He will not be deterred from taking that step because it is done for something greater auspicious aim. I have written in this book in one place, I think within a box also we have put, because it's a common confusion. That means, it is simple as Krishna's steps in Mahabharata also, whatever he did for killing Drona, it is not a right step, right your step, it is a wrong, in the normal moral code, it is wrong. But he did it with the farther vision of that it has to be for the greater protection of the civilization, sustenance of the civilization and good kingship, Kauravas have to be defeated and for that whatever to be done he would do. 
So there, this Shubha and Ashubha will not deter him because he absolutely is clear about his vision. He doesn't go by the moral codes of dharma. He is dharma dharma vivarjitaha. We sing every morning, na dharma dharma vivarjitaha. Beyond dharma and adharma. Like that he becomes. So, he does not hate or is in a, uh, resist from doing something which is not pleasant, not easy, which is difficult or even which is sometimes apparently on, inauspicious. And he doesn't get attached to also, he doesn't cling to also whatever is pleasant, whatever is apparently good or apparently auspicious. He doesn't cling to anything. Whatever to be done, he does. So this is the Tyagi. Who is that? Sattva Samavishtaha Chinna Samshayaha Medhavi Tyagi Akushalam Karma Na Dveshti Kushalecha Na Anushajjate Is it okay? Huh? Yeah, doubt free means he will not have any doubt whether I am a jnani or not jnani, this is self-realization or not. Such doubts also will not be there. Whether there is God or not, whether there is this is right or not, no doubts will be there. Yeah, what is your doubt in particular? No, no, that is always there, but that doesn't mean that if you, he is seeing all the differences, otherwise how can he act? That everything is consciousness is there, always there. That is how he is Medhavi. But when a person has not become Jnani, for him he has to follow this, that he should enhance his Sattva Guna. For the practitioners, he should enhance the Sattva Guna. He should try to always get anchored to the Viveka Buddhi, anchored to the universal vision, a comprehensive vision, so that he can act without any selfishness. That is, wherever we are taking a decision, we have to look into our mind, is the decision colored by my preference and prejudice? Whether I am still looking for some gain from it, some praise or some fame or anything of that sort. All these are the check and balance for the sadhaka to see whether I am behaving in this manner or not. So for him, he has to put the effort to become Medhavi, become Sattva Samavishtaha, become Chinna Samshaya. For a real Tyagi who has already renounced his ego, renounced his Bhogetsha and Katri Bhoktri Baba, let us say, the ego and the Bhogetsha. For him, it becomes natural. We use a word here. For him, it becomes sahaja. For the other aspirant of sannyasa or tyaga, for him, it is a sadhana. For the tyagi who has attained that, for, his, for him, it is sahaja. Sahaja means it is naturally with him. It is spontaneous. That is the difference. For him, this all his consciousness is a sahaja jnana. It is not by in intellectual gymnastic he has to understand then, yes, all is consciousness. Not like that. It is possible because consciousness is not an, in the objective field. Consciousness is what we are. It can never be known as something different from me. So when we know the consciousness, it becomes sahaja. See, any other thing, if you know, then again you have forgotten, you have to learn it. In this case, it is not to be forgotten at all. There is nothing to forget. So, it is called Smriti. At the end of the Bhagavad Gita, we will find Nashto Moha Smriti Rulabdha. That Smriti is not usual objective memory. Not that Smriti. That we are the soul is a fact and that is the only fact. We have forgotten it. When we get back that Smriti, then... There is no question of again thinking like this. That is, it becomes sahaja. Sahaja means which is naturally with him. Is it clear now? Nahi deha vrita shakyam Tyaktum karmanya sheshataha Tyaktum 
कर्माण्यशेषतु कर्म फल त्यागी कर्म फल त्यागी सत्यागी See, after distinguishing the three kinds of tyaga, now he is defining the tyagi in various terms. In this, what he is saying? Satyagi iti abhidhiyate. He is called the real tyagi. Who is that further? He says, Yahtu karma phala tyagi. That he has said earlier also. He is again repeating one who has renounced the karma phala. And next verse onwards, he will say that what is this karma phala? Anishtam, ishtam, mishram, chai. It is not the objective karma phala. Objective karma phala, nobody can renounce because it is a fact of nature. Only the phala is inside. Whenever we link our happiness to that, our bhogecha, to the result. Do you now have got acquainted with these terms? Bhogecha means I want to enjoy from that something. And kartritva means I have an egoistic feeling that I, I will do this, I have done this. These two, it is called together kartri bhoktri bhava. I, expression will become very simple then. But the problem of simplicity is that it will become, become a cliche and nobody will think what is kartri bhoktri <laughs> bhoktri bhava. Whenever we are making it a simple uh, definition like that, the problem is it becomes used so much that nobody thinks about it, what it means. Kartri bhoktri bhava, that means wherever we are doing anything action, we are linking it to either the ego, ahankara or the bhogecha or enjoyment. There comes the problem. So one who has renounced that, he is the tyagi. So this Krishna has been saying in many places also he had said, here again because he is defining tyagi, he is repeating that. And saying that nahi deha vrita shakyam tyaktva karmani asheshataha. As long as the body is there, a uh, living body is there before dying, there is no way that you can leave all the karmas. So he is completely removing the doubt and the misunderstanding that never think that naish karma means all karmas have been renounced. The external karma cannot be renounced. Objective karma cannot be renounced. Externally, you can bodily karma can be renounced, but the mind will go on. That is also karma. So any external karma or mental karma or anything, it cannot be fully renounced as long as the body is there. Dehavrita, shakyam means he is not, he cannot be, he is not able to, he will not be able to tyaktum, reject or renounce, tyaga, karmani asheshataha. The actions, asheshata means without any residue. That means complete renunciation of karma is not possible as long as the deha is there. So by karma phalatyaga, what he means is, hey, by tyaga, what he means is karma phalatyaga. That means katritva bhoktritva tyaga. This is what it is. Can you show the slides? We are showing so that it remains in your mind. Whenever some slides are shown, it, is, it helps our memory also. Aim of spiritual sadhana. We are starting from the point of a constricted identity, a false identity, constricted I. What is that? We have an image of about, about our own identity, depending on the body, our character, our mind, our likes and dislikes, everything. With that, we have posited or we have created our egoistic I. That is the constricted I, because we feel that I am separate from all others. I like this, I like that, he is my enemy, he is my friend. So that's a small constricted I. There we start and the final the the result of the ultimate goal of spiritual sadhana is a liberated i what does it mean a real universal identity atmaupam mena sarvatra samam pasyati yojana it is actually <coughs> universal we are saying because we have the feeling of smallness about us when we say universal we have the feeling of we are all pervading but truly when you actually do this do the sadhana, it is not that all are there and you are there everywhere like that. 
the all entire universe is appearing in the consciousness all the entire universe which includes my body mind personality also that small i that egoistic i is part of the nature part of the world part of the universe that is also appearing in the consciousness that is how the universality is coming because that consciousness cannot be divided it is a subject it it is not an object which you see it is moving it is going here there etc that is the real atma the real soul on which all the objects are appearing to be this is the ultimate now since it is from a small something small identity to an infinite identity self with no fragmentation no division that kind of an identity then what should be the spiritual what should be the process of that is it not simply expansion expansion and removal of the bheda buddhi of the divisional differential notions is it not so from a small differentiated uh, fragmented identity to an undifferentiated uniform universal identity how how can we go by removing the differences removing the smallness removing the selfishness removing the constrictions we will become like that so whatever helps us to go that way that means whatever helps us to for inner expansion that i am becoming wider and wider and i am not so constricted that itself is sadhana suppose by doing puja you become more and more selfish it happens by doing meditation you become more and more selfish then you start beating your child because they are creating noise or so it is very common if you become selfish then it is you are working the other way the wrong way by doing puja or anything if selfishness is increasing that means it is asadhana that you are doing it is not sadhana even by killing others if your mind expands then that is sadhana don't get scared it is in the bhagavad gita what was arjuna taught to kill his own grandfather and own teacher and by that his mind expanded because his mind was small he was not able to do that so krishna's purpose was to give him a dimension of the mind where he can kill duryodhana as well as his most beloved grandfather that impersonal dimension has to be taken that is the goal of spirituality so anything that looking within we find that expanding is spiritual sadhana here what are we studying always it is this only karma phala tyaga means what kartritva bhoktritva tyaga means what that the small ego and i will enjoy i will enjoy these things are being removed so our vision is preference prejudice is being removed so we are becoming more and more uniform comprehensive all in on all, all inclusive impersonal so that is how we are growing so the entire spiritual sadhana we can it's a thumb rule that inner expansion look within and found whatever find whatever i am going to do is it expanding or constricting my mind is it making my mind open and light and bright or is it making me heavy inside is becoming heavy constricted fearful these are the test so this sadhana can be two kinds one is contemplative another is interactive contemplative means we are studying the shastras or even listening to the lectures also while listening we are actually thinking or say meditating these are all non interactive you can say contemplative if you don't use non interactive sadhana another is interactive throughout the day next slide contemplation on soul or brahman which is one and uniform takes the mind to oneness and uniformity <coughs> see this is also very simple whatever we interact with we gain that property suppose a ball is standing another ball is moving when the moving ball hits the standing ball the standing ball starts moving some energy is transferred from here to here and both moves is it not similarly if you interact with an angry person you will find for nothing you are becoming irritable if you interact with a peaceful person you will find some peace is dawning in you anywhere it depends on your association that what you are gaining from there is interchange is taking place everywhere so if you think always of 
say small small things related to your enjoyment indulgence etc enmity blaming praising whatever as long as our mind is interacting with constricted small ideas concepts etc the mind becomes small and constricted the same mind when it interacts with the concept of universal concept noble concept the mind becomes like that it takes whatever we are thinking the mind becomes like that only because it is interacting with such concept is there any doubt about it <coughs> so as we interact more and more think about this soul or brahman then our mind also becomes like brahman finally the mind becomes a pure mind itself is brahman the non differential mind <coughs> so this is the contemplative sadhana what are we doing very simple like experiment that our mind is an entity that i am interacting with some concept of brahman or atma and by that the mind is growing in the dimensions of the brahman and atma even if brahman and atma did not exist also it doesn't matter because that concept it is interacting with the mind will become like that suppose atma is wrong atma is not there how does it matter the mind by interacting with the concept of the atma will be, take the dimension of atma <coughs> that is the science of contemplative sadhana next interactional sadhana now if we only restrict ourselves to contemplative sadhana of one hour a day or so whatever we are gaining in terms of uniformity infinitude uh, going beyond constrictions all of them will be annulled and overpowered by the throughout the day if you are not practicing anything of that is it not so half an hour we practice the give the mind interaction which makes the mind universal and 18 hours we interact in the manner which makes the mind small so what will be the nature of the mind slowly it will become larger or smaller 17 hours it will become small and one hour it will become large so naturally it will become smaller and smaller so what for a real spiritual seeker what he has to do is to he has to transform all his actions all his interactions into sadhana that means throughout the interactive hours he has to have the same goal in mind that uniformity that beyond the bheda buddhi beyond the kartritva and bhoktritva as i have explained just now so all his work all his interactions will have to be induced with that removal of kartritva bhoktritva then whatever he does that becomes sadhana that is what arjuna was trying through the war also every day there was some problem krishna had to resolve has to see that his mind again expands to that dimension even bhima when he defeated duryodhana he was about to step on his head and krishna uh, krishna corrected him what are you doing he is a king you cannot do that you have killed him because killing was necessary more than that you cannot do anything so throughout the day what are we doing evenizing response to pairs of opposites success and failure sukha and dukha that means whenever the dukha which we do not like or even sukha also or success and failure are coming we have to make our reaction in reaction uniform is it is not that in the work you will not look for success that is an objective phala again remind you when you are looking for a success in whatever project you are doing you are looking for the objective result of the work you are doing of the project but the moment you link your enjoyment your happiness with that then it changes so that has to be removed the evenness of the mind towards success and failure means not that he will not no more ask for looking for success and he will be happy with the failure it is not that you will still work for the success but not associating your own kartritva bhoktritva enjoyment and ego with that ahankara with that not to cling to what i like and not to hate what i dislike likes and dislikes always will be there suppose somebody is good will will he not be liked by people suppose somebody is given to all troublesome behavior will he, will anybody like but that like 
or dislike should not we should not cling to the like and we should not hate what i dislike that means it should not generate hatred in us our swami ji always says that in the ashram there should be always a trouble making person because otherwise how the others minds will become purified how they will transcend that trouble creator will test is a test for us that we don't generate hatred towards anybody and it's a fact it's very efficient way of uh, improving our mind <laughs> so it takes the mind to uniformity even in the presence of the interactive plural world see then your sadhana becomes the same whether you meditate read the scriptures or you interact always the goal of both is the same is it clear or not the sadhana becomes an all time sadhana throughout everything through everything you we progress and the progress will be known directly in meditation what happens one day you have a good meditation next day you don't have maybe after that three months you don't have good meditation. so you are not sure whether you are really progressing or not in this case what will happen you can judge your behavior your mind's response every time that i was getting so much affected now i am not getting affected earlier i was not able to love these people i am now able to love these people i don't react to situations so easily i don't get angry with my wife or husband so easily all those things you can test every day everywhere next ha huh. this is the i have just summarized the bhagavad gita sadhana here <coughs> i told the other day also we are born with an abhava bodha abhava bodha means insufficiency why i am saying abhava bodha because of that insufficiency only we try to get something from the external world to become happy if the abhava bodha was not that suppose we were sufficient from beginning then we will not be motivated by desire at all desire is to have some happiness from something that is why all our actions are motivated by desire if we did not have that insufficiency in inborn insufficiency then we, it is uh, in uh, scriptures it is explained very well when Bra- vasishta is considered as the first son of brahma brahma the creator so when first brahma created vasishta he created him thinking that a knower will be very good so he created vasishta as a knower he was poor fellow was not doing anything at all sitting tight like a stone so brahma understood that what has happened because he doesn't have any abhava bodha he doesn't have any insufficiency so he doesn't want anything from the world also and if he doesn't do any sadhana how will he lead other people he will not know anything at all once he has the abhava bodha insufficiency and he understand does the sadhana and finally th- understand that it is abhava bodha is because i am not looking into myself it is a self which makes us purna full because i have been looking for external objects small small things to become happy i have been always suffering from the unhappiness the moment i stop looking for external things for happiness we become happy all these things they will know by sadhana only but vasishta did not do anything then brahma again put him on his lap the moment he put his on his lap vasishta started crying what have you done what have you done i am suffering everywhere there is suffering and all that is with the sankalpa of putting the suffering in his mind brahma did it to give him suffering then vasishta brahma explained to him ha huh, this is the world you suffer and you find out the way to win over the suffering and then you will be able to help people in making them fulfilled why did i say this abhava bodha so we are born with an abhava bodha and that is what makes us act generally all our actions are motivated by desire because what is the desire in baby when i was a baby i will like to have some milk to fulfill my whatever it is then fruit then maybe playing or playing with the friends or fighting with the friends we will be happy whatever so the item goes on changing when we grow a little maybe it is the first rank in the school after that maybe it is a girl after that maybe it is children after that it is maybe grandchildren it goes on changing 
but always we are looking for something to make ourselves happy so it is all desire motivated action that we are having so karma bondage from desire for happiness why karma is binding us actually the whole life is karma only it is action only life is it's a divine law of action everywhere it's action only but generally what we are doing we are acting motivated by the desire and because that desire even if the desire is fulfilled other desires come so because we are not fulfilled the karma actually creates creates a bondage whatever we are doing we are not becoming fulfilled whatever we are doing not becoming fulfilled so lack of fulfillment is binding us and because we want success if we don't get success get failure then we suffer and even if we get success then we become elated till we lose that or something happens so constantly this suffering and happiness we are getting bound by that so this bondage is created by the karma itself desire motivated karma so what did bhagavad gita do the yoga of bhagavad gita how karma itself can liberate us instead of creating bondage the whole bhagavad gita is saying that karma is creating bondage but karma is not at fault it is your it is your mind which is at fault so you change your mindset change your attitude do the karma in the manner it liberates you now if you leave the karma then all the defects of the mind will remain you will remain as impure as you are so you better utilize you engage in action and utilize the action by changing the mind attitude so that the, every time you do something your mind expands you are freed of some constrictions you are freed of selfishness so the mind is always expanding you see the great ingenuity in the whole thing do you understand that are you appreciating that <coughs> it's a great ingenuity in the whole thing the karma is producing bondage krishna said i will make karma the liberating power krishna or by the vaisa whoever i will make karma the liberating instrument instead of producing bondage it will produce liberation and so don't leave karma but leave the desires and desire is redundant why should you not leave go on doing the karma and making it an instrument for liberation so for that he has given in the bhagavad gita fourfold sadhana how to transform the actions by this fourfold mental attitude they are all inner attitudes nothing to do with the external jajja means not performing homa and jajja externally no bhagavad gita jajja is our mental attitude i have already explained jajja and all these i have explained so one is the jajja attitude that is whatever my body mind personality is capable of doing in a given situation it is just an a small speck in the universal jajja of the lord as the plants are growing the flowers are blossoming the earth is running around the sun my body mind personality with its intelligence with its will power also will do naturally whatever is to be done this is a jajja attitude <coughs> then samatva this we have already explained samatva means having the evenness of the mind towards likes and dislikes will be there but we will not hate what i dislike we will not cling to what i like we will not cling to success success we will always want but if there is failure also it will not affect us that is the samatva this samatva bhagavad gita has taken ultimately the mind becomes absolutely even that means it comes through the knowledge that everything is atma alone the whole universe although it is full of infinite variety this variety is only an expression of the soul the whole infinite variety is only as if written on the consciousness so it is an uniformity all over that is the ultimate samatva atmam pammena sarvatra samam pashyati yo arjuna that one who sees everywhere as his atma that is the ultimate samatva so it takes it to that level then transcending guna bondage this i have discussed in great detail that by utilizing sattva guna and rajoguna you win over the tamaguna bondage by applying more and more sattva you win over the rajoguna bondage then finally applying surrender and jajya bhavana you win over the sattva guna bondage also <coughs> these are all coming in the 18th chapter towards the end the 
సరెండర్ అని కూడా ట్రాన్స్ఫెండింగ్ కూడామండి సరెండర్ ఫైనలీ ఇట్ ఈస్ ద యాక్చువల్లీ ఆల్ ద ఫోర్ ఆర్ సేమ్ వెన్ యూ డూ ఇట్ దెర్ ఈస్ నో డిఫరెన్స్ అట్ ఆల్ ఇట్స్ అ క్వశ్చన్ ఆఫ్ అవర్ లైకింగ్ విచ్ వన్ క్లిక్స్ అండ్ విచ్ వన్ వీ ఫాలో we can follow all the four that is why we are saying four fold not four different sadhana whatever you do if you actualize jajja attitude automatically samatva will dawn you will automatically transcend transcend the guna bondage automatically automatically you will start feeling surrendered nature of you that everything is done by nature i am only a witness to all these things we become sakshi witness <coughs> so surrender also doing everything as an offering to the lord that everything is done by nature i don't have any doership or enjoyship no kartritva no bhokritva at all initially it is a sadhana that whenever kartritva comes we surrender that no i am not the doer it is the lord's will let lord's will be done maybe i am not becoming successful then we start getting affected by that that is the time we have to think that no i am thinking like this but maybe lord's will the nature's will is different i should be ready to accept that also in some of the movement suppose the last movement it was not becoming successful then swami ji said that what can we do we have done enough maybe the society is not ripe enough to accept this purity or this purification it will come in its own manner why should we worry so much we have done enough for 6 years we have been fighting we have done enough so he will not get depressed by that he will not get any there won't be any affectation at all we have done whatever to we could do and the society is not ready maybe we were over anxious to make the society all right it is not the nature's will so we accept but this is a surrender we while doing we may apply it but finally one day when the knowledge dawns we come to know that we don't have to surrender we are already surrendered we cannot do anything at all but don't say that before as long as you have the will <laughs> you have to apply the will then when we really understand the surrender then our will becomes god's will lord's will divine will <coughs> so this is just a summarization of the whole thing this is what the normally our spiritual sadhana is what is that go to the right side first non interactional meditation contemplation introspection now the ultimate of this is the discovering the inmost presence <coughs> if i go deeper into it then i don't know 20 minutes are there see see what we call i have told earlier also what we call our awareness our consciousness the usual the in medical science also what we refer to as consciousness it is i am giving an illustration the suppose the sunlight is coming from the top you put a mirror there and with the reflected beam from the sunlight you can see the world when you move the mirror you can see everything with the reflected beam now if you want to if suppose the reflected beam it is showing all but if the mirror thinks that this reflect this beam is coming from myself is it true if the mirror thinks that this beam is the source of the beam is the mirror i is it true because source is somewhere else there might be millions of mirror there each will have its own property some are twisted mirror some are red mirror some are green mirror anything you can do according to that they will see the world suppose we had a microscopic vision in our eyes the world will be looking entirely different suppose we develop two more indriyas sensing magnetism and electricity then also the world will be different so it depends on what is the mirror it is it will show according to that the reflected beam will be according to that now suppose one day we want to find out that well this consciousness where from it is coming i am considering that to be i the mirror but is it really the mirror or something else then what do we have to do to look into the 
original source, what do you do in that case? The mirror is seeing everything with its secondary beam, that is its consciousness. With that he wants to see who is the source of that. Is it not so? So the mirror has to be turned to look into the original source. Is it not so? That is what we are doing in meditation. Normally our awareness is always about the external thing. When we close our eyes, it looks into the thoughts, mostly thoughts, emotions, etc. That is the objective world there. But it is still the awareness which is looking at it. When I want to know who am I, then we are saying that we will stop the thought also. But the fact is that we are moving the awareness from the thoughts. Let the thoughts be there. There most of the people fail. Even if the thoughts are there, it is possible. Let the thoughts be there. Our awareness has to be turned towards the main. So, what we are doing it, rather than showing the thoughts, the focus is changing and we are trying to see where from that I-ness is coming. Where is the main light coming from? Now, when you turn the mirror towards the original light, is the reflected beam there anymore? It has got merged in that original light. That is what happens in Samadhi. That you come to know that you can never see that with the secondary light. The reflected light. When you turn the mirror towards the original light, the reflected light gets dissolved in the original. It becomes redundant. You cannot see the original light with that. The original light expresses itself, manifests itself, shows itself. That is why the self reveals itself. The self reveals the entire world, external world of objects, internal world of thoughts and emotions, and it reveals itself. If there is another revealer who is revealing the self, then that revealer is the self, not which is being revealed. Anything revealed is object before it. The revealer is the self. Now that is the idea of the non-interactional sadhana. So by meditation, we are supposed to discover that source of our eye. <coughs> And to do that, we have to transcend the subject-object duality. Because the duality is coming when this light is showing something else. When the light is showing itself, then there is no subject, no object, no knower, no knowledge, nothing. It is all, it's called non-dual knowledge, non-dual experience. It is also called aparoksha. That is neither pratyaksha nor paroksha. It is called aparoksha. That is non-dual experience. Now, this is the non-interactional sadhana, meditative sadhana. And parallelly in the interactional level, when you are not doing this, you have to do this, which I have just now explained, that samatva in all circumstances, all actions transformed into jajna, witness of gunas, impersonality, that is guna guneshu vartanta, the, all the functions, everything is going on in the phenomenological manner, the gunas are functioning, I am only a witness to that. Then surrender, the sublimation of ego, wherever it comes that I have done it, sublimate that by surrender. So these together, what will do? They will make your interactional life also peaceful, placid, less affected, less agitated, less selfish, less constricted, more uniform, more universal. Is it not so? So, <coughs> that kind of a mindset is very conducive for meditation also. The normal agitation you feel when you sit for meditation, you are not able to meditate because of the fragmented mind. It is running to all the things everywhere. Because throughout the day you have done it, Throughout the day, you have been thinking of all kinds of, which is not necessary at all. Somebody told you something five years back, suddenly it comes to your mind and you think bad about that person. He might be very happy, but you are getting miserable thinking of him. So, it we unnecessarily call. So, when you sit in meditation, you are trying to keep your mind vacant. So, all these thoughts will invade your mind more at that time. Is it not so? You ask them to, no, 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 don't come, don't come. Why should I not come? Throughout the day you have invited us. I will come all the more. Now there is space to come. You are not doing anything. So all of them will just crowd in you. So that is, the, that is why we are not successful in meditation. If you practice this during the wakeful hours, then your mind will always remain 
free of desires calm the moment you sit for meditation automatically it will get absorbed within so the two help each other regenerative that is what we have shown there as this sadhana increases it happen the meditational sadhana as you have absorption that resha that <coughs> feeling whatever you gain in meditation that percolates the whole active life so it helps you to do the interactional sadhana also you will feel a poise you will feel a calmness because of the meditative hours similarly if you do the interactional sadhana that will help in your meditation so two together will go up your meditation also will improve and your interactional state also will be closer to the goal so that is how you finally attain the goal next jal jite paro oh ye to bahut bada hai thoda sa bata dete this is what where bhagavad gita starts you see the first block there on the left ignorance avidya covers real identity small constricted identity <coughs> that i am universal that i am not fragmented by the body mind personality this ignorance is the first culprit or you can say the first blessings also as in vasishtha's case without that not, everything will be different it is just like i gave the other day an example suppose there are waves and the moon is reflected by the waves you see the moon becoming half three four teda meda dancing with the waves etc but is anything happening to the moon the moon is only the light is showing the waves and moon is reflected in the waves but the all the motion of the waves we are imposing on the moon by our delusion similarly the light the what we said just now the atma we were saying that who am i and all that consciousness which is revealing everything revealing the external world revealing the thoughts it just reveals by it never gets tarnished or affected or changes by anything that it reveals a sunlight can reveal the most ugly thing and the most beautiful thing sunlight remains sunlight it doesn't get changed by anything like that this atma by revealing all the states of the mind by revealing suffering sorrow revealing happiness nothing happens to atma but we think that i have become sorry i have become happy that's a delusion because of this ignorance that ignorance if you can remove all the problems will be solved but this removal of ignorance there are two methods one is called kevana jnana nishtha which is the upanishadic way that means exclusive dedication to knowledge <coughs> but it needs a deserving candidate we are not fit for that because we are not able to concentrate on studies we are not able to meditate so for us is not that goal that is reserved for very few people who normally are not interested in the world by nature they are not interested in the world so they take to the study and contemplating they get to the knowledge there but for general for all so to say the sadhana is the bhagavad gita sadhana which approach starts from the second step that is <coughs> hey no no desire kama to enjoy pleasant and abhor unpleasant this is coming from this kama is originating from the avidya from the ignorance I, the moment i see myself to be small i have to run after something i will be afraid of something i will be attracted to something repelled by something so there the desire starts working and make us run around so this kama takes to activity desire motivated activity you need not look into the references and all i am not going into that now whenever we do desire motivated activity it leads to vishaya dhyana constantly thinking of things to enjoy and fearful of facing unpleasant this is what happens this i have already explained i will not go. but you can show the next slide that vishaya dhyana i will come back to this again here just taking the example of money we have shown vishaya dhyana 
that need for money is the initial when we need money actually we need so we strive for money then money comes then money gives us comfort and all so we start thinking about more money more money so constant thought of money leads to fear of losing money and greed to possess more money finally money becomes a burden it is not only the need then it was needed for our happiness but now it is giving rise to unhappiness that he is richer than me i must have this i must have that will i lose will the government confiscate my land and everything all those worries are coming from the being slave to money earlier it was not slavery when we started having money we were master of the money we were enjoying life with that but then the whole concept changes we become slave to the money that is what the sangha is sangha to money increases and we go on desire increases and on this cycle get back to the other one <coughs> hmm. so vishaya dhyana increases sangha that increases giving rise to kama you remember that 2.62 or something ध्यायतो विषयान पुंस संगस्ते शूपजायते संगात संजायते कामः ध्यायतो विषयान पुंस संगस्ते शूपजायते संगात संजायते कामः सो इट इज अ साइकिल ऑफ बॉन्डेज सो एज वी गो राउंड द साइकिल बॉन्डेज डिपेंड्स द बॉन्डेज इंक्रीजेस मोर एंड मोर इफ यू ट्राई टू अनफोल्ड दैट बॉन्डेज राइट इन द चाइल्डहुड इट विल बी इजियर when it has got consolidated it becomes difficult but never i mean be late than never <laughs> so it is not depressing to anybody but it is a fact that it becomes consolidated more and more because we go around the cycle more and more times show the other one <coughs> next ha huh. now this is bhagavad gita whatever just now i explain it is on a chart now in a diagram that to get rid of the desire is our primary goal now to get rid of the desire bhagavad gita analyzes the whole personality and so much of detail in 18 chapter we will find how much of detail is given that what is the seat of desire first to remove we have to know where is the seat of desire where it is sitting we have to act there we have to treat there so in that shloka 13.40 he says that seat of the desire is senses mind and intelligence indriyani mano buddhi asya adhishthanam uchyate <coughs> indriyani mano buddhi asya adhishthanam uchyate they are the seat of desire <coughs> so you have to treat the senses the mind and the intelligence in all the places senses can be initially treated by discipline not to give indulgence to discipline to some extent later on it will be treated automatically by the sublimation of the mind and sublimation of the buddhi and viveka buddhi now for the mi- <coughs> mind and intelligence these are the four methods major methods bhagavad gita has suggested just now i discussed them that the janja vision samatva attitude gunatita vision and surrender corresponding shlokas are also written there now when you treat the mind and the buddhi like this what happens is the sublimation of ego and desires automatically these what they will do they will reduce your ego and reduce your desires so the reduction of ego and desire automatically flood your mind with a quality called placidity prasada that is the real prasada a sense of placidity because it is the desire and the ego which is not allowing our mind to become calm always it remains agitated fragmented so it mind becomes uniform placid <laughs> sublimation of ego desires prasada leading to self experience now when the mind becomes calm placid you will find that meditation you don't have to do meditation happens meditation dawns automatically when there is nothing to do automatically because of the prasada mind will just settle it will just get absorbed in the sometimes in the infinitude sometimes in the zero sometimes in everything it depends 
but everywhere you feel the expansion, lightness and brilliance. So that finally, th what happens is that this self-experience, which further treats the senses, mind and intelligence, when that self-experience happens, the effect of the experience falls on the senses also. Because he finds, when you find a higher joy, you don't run after the lo lower joy anymore. Many people it has happened from all uh, jazz music and all, when they go to classical, they don't no more like the modern music or jazz or so. Anything higher when we appreciate, when we appreciate higher and noble attitudes of mind, noble emotions of mind, you will not like the other small, small selfish things or so. So automatically this self-experience and the corresponding prasada starts treating the senses, mind and intelligence. So, this is also a cycle, but it is a progressive cycle of purification. The earlier one was a cycle of bondage, which was going to deeper and deeper bondage. Here it is now relieving the bondage through that. But mind you, it remain, the sadhana has to be throughout the interactional period also. All those four have to be applied in the interactional period. This finally, when it relieves the knowledge, gets matured, maturation of jnana and purity leading finally to self-realization, we say. Now, self-realization is not a one point that one fine morning you get up and find that you have become self-realized. It's a process of gradual sublimated dawning and perhaps you can say it is never ending also, not in the terms of knowledge, but the divinity goes on increasing and increasing, never ending. You can take it to any level. Life divinized. This is what it is. Like next. Does it help? Prabuddham vimuktam vikaradihinam Prasannam sada nitya bodhasvarupam param nishchalam nirgunam sarvarupam bhajeham pranomi prabuddham vimuktam vikaradihinam Prasannam sada nitya bodhasvarupam param nishchalam nirgunam sarvarupam bhajeham sadanusmarami pranomi.